Good evening. Welcome to Midweek. We're glad you're here with us. If you are a guest or visitor, please check out our website for more information. And if you are looking for a way to connect, you can go to friendshipsturgis.com slash connect. More information about that and information about other things are on the site. As well as if you're looking to give your tithe, you can go to friendshipsturgis.com slash give or mail in at 5491 Craig Springs Road. Thank you for being here this evening. And if you're looking for a church home, we hope that you'll find it at Friendship. This evening we're going to look at at the book of Jude. So if you've got your Bible, it's one of the last books before the book of Revelation. You can turn there. In a minute you'll see a slide on the on the screen on your video that show you all the the things that we're going to talk about tonight and the points and things like that so that you're able to write those down real quick and you can follow along as we go along. Well, the first thing we're going to look at this evening is what Jude is all about and who Jude is and this being a message for Jude. So let's look at verses 1 through 3. It says, Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to those who are called Beloved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy and peace and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints. So the message for Jude, the message is, it describes exactly who he is. He's a bondservant. The difference between a servant and a bondservant is within our human history, we know someone who is a servant is someone that doesn't have any measure of control to whether they serve or not. They're in servitude, whether they're paying a debt off or whether they're a slave in that sense. A bondservant is one who chooses to follow Jesus Christ, His mandates, His commands, because they have been given freedom in Him. So He's a bondservant. He knows who Christ is. He's the brother of James. He understands who God is and the importance of all of that. So, so all of those things are important, but the, the, the writer is saying, you know, I want you to continue to live and can you to live well and that love be mercy, mercy and peace be multiplied in you and so there's there's some commonality essentially this is a greeting that's saying you're a brother in Christ and I want you to know and be encouraged because I would hope that you do so with me the second thing we see in this passage starting in verse 4 the consequences of denying Jesus verses 4 through 8 Verses 4 says this. It says, For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Licentiousness and denying someone who creeped in and, and is leading in the wrong direction, those who are ungodly and don't believe, these are the people that he is calling out here in this passage, in, in these verses here, in, in verse 4 that is. Verse 5, it says, Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. This is a reminder for, for historical sake and for reminding of what has happened in the past, that the God who delivered also was the God who judges. And the God who judges, you have to believe. But also, the last thing it talks about, angels and judgment. Verses 6 through 8, it says, And angels who did not keep their own domain, but abandoned their proper abode, he has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they, in the same way as these, indulged in gross immorality, and went after strange flesh are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of the eternal fire. Yet in the same way these men, also by dreaming, defiling the flesh and rejecting authority and revel angelic 
majesties. Denying Jesus comes in so many different forms. It's not just what you say with your mouth, although it is, but it's also in these grave examples of what happens when you deny Him and the judgment that comes after those things. See, we all have a decision to trust or deny Him. We all have a choice to believe or not believe. And these are some of the examples from biblical past that really put an exclamation point on denying Jesus and the consequences of that. Thirdly, the Lord's rebuke, verses 9 through 16, it says, But Michael the archangel, who, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these men revile the things that they do not understand and things that they know by instinct like unreasoning animals by these things they are destroyed woe to them for they have gone the way of Cain and for pay they have rushed headlong into the error of Balaam and perished in the rebellion of Korah these are the men who are hidden reefs in your love feast when they feast with you without fear caring for themselves clouds without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees, without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame, like foam, wandering stars, for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these men that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly, all their ungodly deeds, which they have done in ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers finding fault, following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. The Lord's rebuke. They're calling on the Lord's rebuke, meaning that the Lord will handle judgment, will handle consequences and punishment for those who have chosen these abhorrent ways of life. It's important to see what God is going to do and how God is leading. See, this is the book directly before the book of Revelation. So we know the Revelation is talking about the apocalypse or the end times, uh, the return of Jesus Christ. And this executing of judgment will happen once and for all in that respect. That will be what happens. So the Lord's rebuke that He's calling on, the Lord will not sit back and allow for things to continue to go on. Eventually they will reach a point to where the Lord will say, enough is enough. So fourthly, we are to remember His words. Verse 17 through 25. It says, But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, in that they were saying to you, In the last time there will be mockers following after their own ungodly lusts. These, ones, these are the ones who cause divisions, worldly-minded devoid of the Spirit, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to come to eternal life, and having mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. And on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, authority, before the time, all time and now and forever. Amen. Remember these words. Remember what Christ has done. Remember those teachings throughout God's Word. Remember to not give in to the world around us, but to stand without stumbling, to lead others, snatching them from the fire. So what is the application that we might have 
in this historical warning that Jude is bringing? Well, the first thing we can draw from this is, is in asking the question, what's God's message for you and are you listening? What is God trying to teach you, tell you, lead you to this evening? And are you listening? We think about what the Bible says as a whole. We think about what this passage said to the audience, what it might say to the church today, or what it might say about our culture as we approach the end times. But what is He trying to say to you? And are you listening? See, there are distractions that come from all areas and all corners of our lives. Are you able to dial those down and refocus on Him? See, in reality, the devil knows he cannot triumph. He cannot win over God. God has already won the battle and He will be at the very end of everything triumphant. So we have to do what we can in our life to dial down the devil's distractions that keep us from living within the will of God, that keep us from prospering, that keep us from advancing and having this abundant life that God always calls and says that we are to have. He wants to do everything to keep your focus off of God and and what you ought to be about. But in our lives we have to understand the strength and the power and the might of God in us and dial down the distractions and focus in on Him. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? We have to make that a priority in our lives at all costs that we might be faithful with what He has called us to do and that He might do abundantly more in our lives for His name's sake in this world. So will you do that? Secondly, as we think about how to apply Jude, we need to ask this question. What can we learn from the past that can guide us? What can we learn from the biblical past and what those people did and didn't do well or what they did and did well to follow the Lord? Those things we can learn. But what can we learn from our past that can guide us to do better for God's sake and for the kingdom's sake in the future. We all live with deep regrets and hurts from the past, many of which we chose, some which we haven't. But they can serve as great learning moments of not to do those things again. Or they can learn and teach us how we might want to live in a different way, how we might want to operate differently in this world And so we learn and they become something that grows us instead of something that hangs on our neck like a heavy weight that we can't get through, that continues to drag and drag on our lives until it takes and steals our joy. We are to live in a manner of uprightness, righteousness, and Jesus died for our sin, not so we could hang it on our neck and continue to walk with it, but so that we could be free in Him. His sin, I mean His death covered a multitude of our sin. We need to remember that. We don't have to carry that burden any longer. The third thing we can remember is we can remember God's words and authority both today, forever, and in the future. We can remember God's words. Everything He says is true. The authority it should have, meaning that, that God's word and the, and the leading of God should speak louder than anyone, anybody else in our lives. There's so many external sources that try to speak into our lives when only God matters and His opinion of us. Verse 11, going back to it, talks about they ran greedily or they operated in such a manner. They were reckless of the cost, the loss of God's favor, and heaven. On they rush after gain like Balaam. My discerning understanding in all of this, and the danger is, is that this seemingly has much commonality with our culture today. 
that doesn't care, that is running reckless after this and that that supports how they want to live rather than looking at God's Word and what it says. God's Word is absolute, meaning that it doesn't need our opinion. It says what it says, and it means what it means. And I even beg to ask the question, have we lost favor? We look at the culture in America and even our culture in the state, and we see all the things that are going on. Is it because of our past actions? Is it because of our current actions that we have lost favor? Have many denied Jesus? Simply they're unaware or don't care. Or they've chosen specifically to deny Him. See, judgment, to me, I leave to the Lord. And I pray daily for His mercy and grace concerning the world that we live in. His mercy and grace is what speaks to the heart of mankind. But you and I play a part in that as well. How we live matters. And looking at this scripture, we see that verse 22-23 talks about having mercy on some who are currently doubting to save others, snatching them out of the fire. You and I must live in a way that others are open to what God is trying to say to them that they might be snatched out of the fire. And I know how we can get so focused in, laser focused on our own lives. But our lives have to be more than that. Our lives have to speak more than that. And not just for us and our own. We can get into that whole mentality of us and our own. But it should be everyone that the gospel is concerned with. That means anyone and everyone, we should take the opportunity to live in a manner worthy of the gospel and righteousness, but also to share the good news with the world around us. I still sit on the fact that, that many of us don't share the gospel at all. We don't live like it outside of church. We like to live and think that church and church services and studying the Bible is in this bubble, and who we are outside the bubble is not who we are. But the reality is, who you are is who you are. So if you spend 75% of your time acting and living like the world, then I question whether you know Jesus Christ or not. See, He wants to be Lord of all. Or the truth of the matter is, if He's not Lord of all, is He really Lord at all in your life? Do you really know Jesus Christ? Did you walk down and make a decision in the church service or something else to which you did not fully grasp nor understand? And that's why your life doesn't resemble anything of Him. Because if you truly know Him and His love, you'll want to live and you'll want to tell and you'll want to serve. That is the Great Commission. We are entering into a time in this world to where we are drawing nigh to the time that He will return. I don't know and I'm not a prophecy person so I don't have a clue on when that will happen. He has not revealed to me nor let that out because I believe every time is in His hands. And His times are not like our times. His day may be a thousand years, and we don't know. We are just supposed to live with His love for others, and we're supposed to live as if today might be the very last day. And I pray that that's your choice this evening. Let's go to to God in prayer, and then we'll look at some of our prayer requests. Heavenly Father, God, I just pray if there's a decision in our heart we need to make, God, if there are changes that need to be had, God, that we're willing to make them, God, for the sake of our own faith, but for the sake of others in our lives. Heavenly Father, on this day we need to call on you as Lord and Savior for the first time, I pray that we do so. But God, maybe we have slid in a direction in our life we never intended to go. Maybe we've gone into the spiritual bubble And then we live like the world outside of it, God. God, I pray that we get right with you tonight, confessing those things so that you might have 100% of us and not just a piece of us. Father God, whatever's on our heart and mind, let us be willing, let us be honest, and let us live out the good news every day. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, this evening we want to remember the Har family uh, that's, that's connected you know, with with Robert and Stephanie 
Coleman and their family. We want to remember them and their loss. We want to remember the people of Louisiana. We want to remember all those that are going through Sally right now and the rains and so forth. We need to remember the Hickman family and all those connected with that family. We need to remember Awana's teachers and families as next Wednesday, Awana's will be back in person. So that's coming up and we're very excited and that's at friendshipsturgis.com slash Awana. You can sign up for that. Also, we need to remember missionaries this week. Missionaries Chase and Lauren Fendel. They're from California and church planners. We need to pray for God to open hearts and doors to the gospel. We need to pray for their apathetic community. We need to pray for the community to encounter Jesus and experience life to the fullest. I'll ask you also not only to pray for them, but we are looking to return to Sunday school for everybody to our normal hour on October the 4th. So that's a time where you can come back and have in-person Sunday school, but maybe you can't make it to in-person Sunday school. Maybe you're not ready to come to in-person Sunday school. We will still have, as much as possible, classes through Zoom as well as in-person to for forever as far as I'm concerned because it meets a need. But So if you can't be there, know that we'll still have that for you. We're going to work in the upcoming weeks as well, bringing our services to a live format versus being recorded and watching. So, so please watch out for those announcements as well. Uh, all the things coming up and more, we hope that you join us for. On October the 27th at 5, we will have an ordination for Trevor. It is a minister ordination. And, and that'll be at 5 for the service, and we're looking to live stream that. And then 3 o'clock, if you are ordained pastor or deacon, we invite you to the ordination council at 3. So those things are coming up and more. Please take note of those. Also, if you're a parent of a, of a kid, notice that you've heard this, this worship that's going on or this weekly message that's going on. I ask for you to please check out that. And take note of that. You'll have a weekly video where you can hear from Brother Trevor, but you can also hear from uh, others who are doing skits and family discussions that are happening. That is a weekly availability for you. And so please check out our website and check out those kind of informations below this video. We'll add those to the comments, I'm sure, as we go along. So please check those out at I believe friendshipsturges.com slash kids. Thank you very much. Let's pray for these prayer requests and let's go for today. Father God, we come at this time. God, we ask for your will, your might, your purpose to be done in the lives of those we've mentioned tonight. Father, as we approach these ministries, God, we pray that they bring honor and glory to you. Father God, as we are coming back, we ask that you keep us safe, that you keep our family safe, that you keep us well from sickness, God. And God, we pray for those that are sick, those that are in need, God, that you heal them if that's within your will. Father God, in your name's sake we pray. Amen. We'll see you back. Check out for that video and the kids. And we'll see you back on Sunday at 9 and 11. 11 o'clock will be broadcasting online. And we hope to see you soon.